should have done at the beginning. The session will be recorded as well, so you'll be able to reference back to it. Um, and I do ask that um, you keep your microphone on mute, and then we will have time to the last 10 or so minutes of, to, of our hour today for you to ask um, any questions that you have for our panelists. All right, so without further ado, I'm going to turn things over to Professor Liu. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, let's see. Could you see my screen now? There it goes. Perfect. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Um, so, STEM Core scholars, welcome to the session so we could share information about uh, the summer internship that we had for the past summer 2021 and what we're planning for 2022, which is more important for you uh, to right. consider. Right, so um, so first of all, my name is Charles Liu. I am the chair and the faculty member of the Electric and Computer Engineering at Cal CLA. So today I would like to introduce um, what Electric and Computer Engineering and the multidisciplinary uh, uh, areas that we cover in the field. How is that related to the current world? Uh, how the applications that, that you experience currently is related to electric and computer engineering? So I want to give you some, some overview about the, the, uh, the technical areas. And you can see this is truly something uh, challenging on one hand, but on the other hand, it's very, very related uh, to the practices that you experience right now. And then uh, we will more be, be more specific about the past experience and what we're thinking about in the future. Apparently, we'd be more than happy to work with the growth sector, with STEM Core, with Cheryl and the, the, um, the staffs to find out uh, what we can do next summer. So we, we're start, we have started planning. Um, so this is our commitment. And hopefully, uh, if you can find interest you can take the challenge with us. You're more than welcome to apply. All right. So let me um, show uh, some of the, um, the, the slides that I prepared for you. So first of all, let me move myself a bit so you can see my screen. Um, so Internet of Things. Nowadays, um, it happens everywhere, right? So through the uh, advances of the technologies of Internet of uh, uh, Internet, right? So Everything could be connected to the internet, right? Think about that. Not only your laptop computer, your desktop computer, your, your tablet PC, your smartphone, you name it. Very soon, you will experience that everything could be directly connected to the internet, even a street lamp, right? Even some surveillance cameras, right? Even there are uh, also the, the devices that you could you don't see, but it's actually embedded somewhere at your home. They are connected directly to internet. So through that, for example, you can have a smart home before you go back home during the you know the the, the days with the over 100 degrees at in Southern California. You can turn on your AC at home. You can schedule when you want to cook your dinner and so on and so forth. When you want to remotely access your uh, appliances at home. So this is already happening. Also, for example, the, uh, the transportation, the navigation system, uh, nowadays there's also intelligence built into it. So your um, smartphone helper actually can provide you some, uh, some planning behind. There's some intelligence within based on the current traffic you be, you can be guided through the, the fastest route when you are taking multi, multiple uh, stops on the way home or on the way to school right so these are actually provided and facilitated through the concept which is called internet of things and internet of things needs a lot of uh, technologies in computer hardware computer software so uh, in ECE, electrical and computer engineering, you need to learn embedded programming. You might have heard about Python, C programming, circuit design, communication antenna, right? Have you seen those fake trees on your campus? 
those ugly fig trees, those are actually so-called the transceivers to communicate with your cell phones. So it's movable, right? You can move to everywhere. It's mobile, so you can you can actually communicate uh, with uh, the different fake trees, so that they provide you the uh, the connections uh, ubiquitously, right? So these are actually some of the key uh, technologies you will you will experience if you are interested in engineering, right? Circuit design, antenna. There are a lot of mathematics behind that. Very soon you will see what you have learned in math and physics actually paid off. <laughs> so it is uh, it is about your job future job security, you know, because uh, uh, engineering students and eventually if you decide to go for the career in engineering, this is something that's truly impacting your your uh, your future and also this is about your, your job security because calculus is there. Physics is there, and engineering courses is down there, right? So these are uh, uh, truly what you can be prepared and how you will become an engineer or a computer scientist. Machine learning. When you purchase something from Amazon, the very first day you're going to receive a lot of um, customized commercials to you. They're predicting what you're going to pay next. On one hand, it's helpful, it's convenient. Maybe you're, it's very uh, the best hit that you want to experience when you purchase something. Uh, but on the other hand, they want to gain your money. But anyhow, believe it or not, there's no human intervention behind. Everything is about machine learning. Electrical and computer engineering is the largest um, area which covers the key technologies related to machine learning. So in our curriculum, um, in a, a, um, a, an undergraduate program and also in the graduate program, there are courses related to machine learning, neural networks, and also there's sensory system because you're collecting some data. It could be image or just a simple motion sensor, right? So all those sensors are uh, the devices that communicate with uh, the, uh, the electrical and computer engineering the systems to provide you the data and the, the signals to determine what you want to do, right? So uh, also you could see on the screen, uh, on the right, you see a robotic arm. This is one of the the uh, the project that we're doing at Cal State LA. So this is not controlled by a joystick or game pad or your smartphone, right? It is actually connected through the nerve system to a patient, right? So there is biomedical engineering, right? So there are some medical devices, MRI, CT scan. Those are actually very, very related to electric and computer engineering. All right. So uh, through, for example, in the robotic arm project, you will be the patient will be able to operate through the human nerve to the robotic arm. So there's an interface in between that involves very, very difficult computations and the, the uh, sensory system. I just want to give you the exposure what this is about. Also, you see a drone at the bottom of this uh, slide. You could actually see that there's also uh, the drone. And we use the drone. Uh, this is another uh, professor's project to detect, right? There is a camera uh, in, uh, mounted, mounted at the bottom of the, 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 uh, the drone so that it is sent to some tunnels to see potential cracks and see if there's actual, there's some danger, potential dangers in the structure of the tunnel. So that is another example. Uh, so the, the drones, um, or a UAV, unmanned vehicles, could be sent to hazardous areas that human beings cannot access. Right. All these are related to robotics, control, and sensory-based systems. And a lot of these are actually ECE. I'm going to skip some of the slides, but you could see that this is a, how we help patients to 
be able to collect data into a smartphone, right? So uh, daily exercise data could be recorded through a simple app developed by our undergraduate students, uh, some robotic arm or gloves. Uh, these are all related to the biomedical engineering project. If you are interested, come to us next summer. All right, so we will. You have you will uh, experience all of these, um, and also we have student clubs. Not only we're not just nerd, sorry, we're not nerd, but <laughs> we also uh, have um, activities. Ho hopefully, after the pandemic, right? You can work with the, uh, you can play with the, uh, or graduate and non-graduate students on campus and have some physical exercise as well. Power area is another another big area uh, under electrical and computer engineering. So nowadays, if you think about um, Tesla, right? Um, the very, very core technology is not the digital system only, but also the battery. That is the huge area in automobile industry, right? They are developing the, mo the, uh, the batteries, which determines who will win the market. And what is that related to? Power. That is also electrical engineering. Smart grid. Nowadays, um, Southern California Edison uh, can install a small device on your AC. And in those peak hours, they can shut down your AC, right? Um, but of course, there's incentives. They're going to pay your uh, reduce, give you some some um, um, you know some discount during the rush hours during summer. So what is that about? That's about a smart grid. So they want to make sure that the power could be, the energy could be mostly, if most efficiently used for the residential, for the business areas. Right. And also green, the green power energies uh, and resources, right? So the solar power, wind power, these are about the future that we're going to encounter. And the learning is right now for the future, for en power engineers. So why do you want to choose EE? The salary is good. <laughs> All right. I don't want to uh, elaborate on that. You could see the, the chart, which shows uh, this is a, a very promising field with a good job market and also very good salary. And also, uh, it is still a very hot area. So. Um, that it, uh, there are a lot of demands of um, uh, the work workforce in the neighborhood industry. And on our campus, we have student professional organizations. So students work together, play together, and they've attended the, um, for example, the conferences, and they even publish paper together. A lot of research opportunities are actually available for even undergraduate students. Because Cal State LA is not a PhD granting university. We have an undergraduate and master level graduate program. So we work together with a lot of hands-on experiences to help our students be ready for the industry. Right? So Biomedical Engineering Society, the IEEE, is the largest professional society in the world. And uh, Dr. Curtis Wan, who will speak and will play with you later through um, uh, uh, different activities, um, he is actually our uh, faculty advisor for the stu student chapter chapter at Cal State LA. Student, I mean, Society of Women Engineers that provide unique opportunities for female students to learn together to acquire knowledge from. Uh, you know, from industry, professional activities as well. SHES is the Society of Hispanic Engineering and Science Students. Um, so there are the annual um, um, conferences. We actually, Cal State LA, uh, take the rotation to host the conference locally here. And there are job market, sorry, the job fairs. And also the it's a conference, so there's technical demonstrations and workshops for our students to get exposure to what is hot in industry right now. Um, this is very important to your part, uh, internship and employment. 
uh, the bottom image actually shows the um, the the uh, brand names that our students are working on right now. Uh, it varies from the aerospace industry, uh, computer, digital engineering fields, um, power field, the traditional power and water uh, district the, uh, in the local government. It also involves people, uh, our students in the, uh, the biomedical engineering field among others. So the top one, the, the top left are the current uh, efforts that we're making. We're working with Intel, Texas Instrument, MathWorks, and AMD Xilinx. Uh, those are the, the, uh, the, the companies that we're currently working with to receive their technologies and build them in into our curriculum. And also internship is another big thing. So during the summer, in the coming summer, be prepared. We're going to bring those technologies into our summer internship. So for the past summer, mainly, the, uh, as Cheryl mentioned, we had five students, two of them are with us today. So they can share with you what they've done with the Xilinx technologies for the past summer. But on top of that, currently we're developing a partnership with the other companies, including what I just mentioned. So uh, you could experience the, the cloud computing experience, the edge computing experience, the MAT, MATLAB experience, uh, I, you name it. These are uh, very, very heavily used in the engineering curriculum. And um, in addition to what you will experience in the curriculum, we also want them to be uh, embedded into the summer internship and also workshops that you can experience. I would just stop here. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Wen will be able to provide you additional information. Meanwhile, I'm gonna send Cheryl a um, Google, uh, Google form link. So uh, Cheryl will be able to share with you the link. So uh, if you can just fill out a very quick survey through that Google form, uh, we will be able to follow up with you. If you have any question, regardless if this is uh, related to the internship or something in general about the discipline, we will be more than happy to, to work with you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Dr. Liu. Um, I will, um, yeah, also I'll wait for that link and um, students, I will share um, the information so you can get um, directly in contact with um, Dr. Liu and Dr. Wang. Um, I'm also going to drop in the chat, um, you've probably already received it from your campus student support specialist, but also a link to the STEM core internship application that is now live. So as you are learning all these amazing things from our um, Cal State LA partners, um, just know that this opportunity is available um, for you to, to begin applying for um, beginning now for summer 2022. Um, so I will turn it back over to Dr. Wang. All right, hey everyone. Um, so yeah, we're joined by Aaron and Mesfin today uh, who are two of our interns. I just wanted to highlight real quickly the great work that they did this summer. Um, we kind of have, they actually made uh, this little web page highlighting their accomplishments for the summer. Um, a lot of the CAD um, design for a robot um, was actually done by Aaron. And these websites, a lot of these were built by uh, Mesfin. So this is kind of what they worked on this summer. Um, and so there's a lot of different opportunities. Um, they've uh, Martha and Luce here made these kind of alumni videos, very nice videos. Um, yeah, here's kind of an example of their website development project. Here's our um, beautiful team of interns here. So just wanted to show off cool work that they did this past summer. And so um, made a little Padlet here. Um, I'm gonna copy and paste it in the, uh, in the chat here. So go ahead and um, it's more of a panel. So we have Aaron Mesfin here 
myself, um, we're able to answer kind of any questions you are. So go ahead first, let's um, please introduce yourself. You could just hit the little plus here. And um, this way we can kind of know a little bit more about you and then uh, maybe tell us where you're, which college you're at, anything you want to share about your summer, anything you want to learn directly learn about um, this experience, the STEM core internship. And of course, if you have any questions already um, for our, for our uh, former interns or me or Dr. Liu, uh, please feel free to just hit plus there. Um, let's see if Mesfin and Aaron, are, are, are they pinned already? I actually don't know. If... Yes, they should be pinned. Okay, cool. Thank you. refresh here and see if uh, oh wow so we've got cool we've got someone from Colorado Laney College where is Laney College um Laney's in the Bay Area oh very cool oh so then yeah Mesfin is also from the Bay Area Well, maybe, um, Dr. Wang, while we're waiting for questions to come in, um, I know a question that has come up, I've already been hearing from students, just a little um, not, or just unaware of like what the process looks like in terms of um, a day in the life of an intern, particularly for um, Mesut and Aaron, who were um, sort of like in this virtual um, research type of um, world. So maybe if um, Aaron and Mesfin, if you could maybe speak a little bit in terms of like what your experience was like, like what life um, was like from day to day. Okay, I'll go first. So um, uh, it, uh, it was great internship. First of all, thank you uh, for growth sector. Thank you, for, uh, Cheryl, for this opportunity. And thank you, Dr. Wan, uh, Dr. Lu. So this inter internship will put you uh, will put you on the right path. So I mean everybody should take it. Uh, you have to you learn a lot. So you you are going to develop your soft skill uh, and also your your technical skill. So there is also a career development that you are going to. Uh, it's going to be very important for the future for employment so you'll have alumni to to discuss uh, and to uh, to upgrade your knowledge uh, about your future so you, you, now you might not find your way uh, i mean you, you may be confused uh, but in the future it will give you a direction where to focus and to be more uh, technical and also to to build your uh, soft skill knowledge so it's those are very important that i learned from this summer internship. Besides that, um, besides that, you're, you're going to work in teams, so uh, you, you'll understand how, how much it's important uh, teamwork is. So we work in teamwork. We I got a great knowledge of uh, from this uh, uh, internship. They are very, very smart people are there. Uh, so they will guide you. Uh, I, they are the best, so uh, I had I took my lessons. So in the future, I mean, uh, everybody should get this chance and uh, make your career path strong. Uh, so I will advise you. I would I would encourage you to attend this uh, internship. Uh, I will pass it for uh, Anna more. Thank you. Hello, 
my internet's a little shaky, so we'll see how it goes. But so a day in the life of a Cal State LA intern, I think it was pretty amazing. Um, so the week to the day to day process of it is we have different uh, meetings for different subgroups. So within the internship, they gave us a career development workshop, weekly workshop of the robotic arm and then the website design and as well as some biomedical research lab uh, training as well. So every day was a little bit different and it also required a little bit of self-study and work to contribute to the following day. Um, within the internship, it really grew my skills as a technical person, being having to be able to convey information, which it seems easy in person, but over, over Zoom, it becomes pretty difficult trying to explain specific areas to look at, as well as different uh, locations that you're trying to place objects. Um, another thing that the internship did was really built my, kind of heightened my skills as like project management, because it made me go into trade analysis, which components, when we're doing the robotic arm, which components to source, the stuff that you don't really think about, but that goes, that's on the back end of the design aspect of it. And just the biggest thing is just the collaboration. Like Mesman said, there's so many smart people, so much information you can learn from everyone that you just have to take it in and be able to collaborate. Great, thank you um, both Aaron and Mesman for, for um, that synopsis. I think um, one thing that I've heard from, I guess other students is just the, since we did have a team of um, STEM core interns that participated this summer, um, can you talk about your interaction with the other interns, your interaction with other um, Cal State LA students, your interaction with the faculty at Cal State LA and just what all of that looked like? Of course, so, so the interaction with the interns, we actually made a discord so we can communicate with one another and be able to be on the same page, which helped out quite a bit because um, while being remote, people are doing different things and having different tasks. So it's able, we we're able to stay on the same page. Um, within the, the other mentors that we were shadowing within the different sub teams, I think they were very available. I think he's disconnected. So I'll, uh, I'll add furthermore. So uh, the communication between inter, inter, interns also is very important. We were communicating uh, most of the time. That also a, a huge deal uh, make us like uh, make us stronger and more more knowledgeable. Our interaction also it's very important. So besides uh, besides the mentor team, it's important to communicate with interns each other. Uh, th th that's also very important thing. Besides that, we communicated with the uh, with the uh, mentors. The, 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 they are the, as I told you earlier, they are so skillful. So we, you, you, you're gonna have knowledge from everywhere. Uh, that what you have going to do is just make yourself ready. Uh, th that's all. In, uh, open mind to learn, uh, to, to 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 research those kind of things, but it will change your life. Uh, as, I, as, as I understand it, it will change your career path. Thank you. Thanks so much, Mesfin. Um, Dr. Wang, do you think you can um, maybe shed some light and give a little bit more information around um, the, the mentors and just like how the, um, the current CSULA students are like what their role is and then um, how they work with the, the potential STEM core interns? Yeah, so what we did this summer was a little uh, rough at the beginning, but uh, we finally kind of figured it out based on uh, everyone's interests. Uh, basically, if there's something you're interested in, you know, we have a lot of these different kind of, I would 
their projects that you can work on. They all need different roles. Um, you know, there's like um, some of our interns were more interested in multimedia, right? Like making videos, making um, graphics. Um, Martha, for example, was very, very good at graphics and she really enjoyed it. So she did a lot of kind of the, um, the, I don't know, branding's the right word, but you know, the aesthetics of kind of uh, uh, the presentations of, of the designs. Um, I had Mesfin who wanted to work on web technologies. So he made a website, for example, and then we had Aaron who was interested in uh, kind of the mechanical design. So he worked more directly on the robots mechanical design. So, um, Generally, we have like a smattering of projects every summer. Um, this past summer, it was this kind of uh, this um, shower assisted robot. But you know, next summer it could be something different. It could be something with like uh, Intel technology or Xilinx technology. Um, a different one. There's <clears throat> there's a lot of different possibilities. So we'll you know we'll try to find something for everyone. And I see now there's actually a couple of questions inside here. So oops, hit the wrong thing. So I also saw in the chat there's a question. I don't know if it was answered already. Um, regarding travel assistant from out of state, I think that's a Cheryl question. Um, yeah, so Cinnamon, thanks for asking that. Um, and then in terms of whether the um, opportunities will be remote or in person or both. Um, so through our STEM core application process, I think the goal is to really make sure that we're matching students like the best way possible. So if students are potentially a good fit, I think that there um, could be a potential opportunity for um, travel or for students to relocate for the summer if that's something within their realm. Um, I did talk to, um, I guess, our Cal State LA faculty, and it sounds like the plan is to be primarily in person for um, summer 22. That's correct, Dr. Wang? Yeah, that's what it would be. Thanks for the question, Cinnamon. Okay, well, actually there was a question here earlier, but it looks like it might've been deleted. Huh. Did I, did someone delete it? Okay, well, if you have a question there, feel free. I'm to ask it. Uh, I'll just look through here. It looks like, hello everyone from out of state. Very cool. Saddleback. Okay, cool. Felix and Luce, I believe, are from Saddleback. Um, forward to learning more about the power and renewable energy concentration. Okay. Uh, let's see what else. Yeah, so, okay, so I saw a couple of um, questions, like if there are opportunities in this program for um, anyone not specifically looking to start a career in electrical engineering, and yes, um, yeah, I think uh, we just talked about it in a way, but basically, uh, yes, you know, we'll try to find something, basically any engineering project requires someone from every engineering discipline, you know, so. That's, uh, that's kind of how it works. Everything's kind of, these days, things are becoming more and more interdisciplinary, right? We're really, um, you know, for instance, the National Science Foundation, um, their big goal for almost every problem these days is this kind of idea of convergence, um, bringing people from every STEM discipline together to solve like one big problem. And so that's, what a lot of engineering is going towards these days. Um, Dr. Wang, we have a mix of STEM core students here. Um, some are relatively new and just beginning their STEM track um, and pathway to calculus readiness. Um, so can you talk a little bit about um, desirable skills or um, just anything that students can be doing right now to make them um, prepared for or to make them best candidates for um, potential placement um, with this program for next summer? 
Yeah, I think definitely, um, you know, math is definitely very big in engineering, right? It's kind of the foundation of it all. You don't have to love it, but you should be, you should be able to try to get kind of decent at math, right? So um, if you, if something's really not clicking in your math class, like really reach out your, to your instructor and try to find, figure out a way that maybe they can explain um, a concept differently to you or something, or maybe you just have to do a few more problems, but really try to make sure um, that you can grasp those concepts early on. Um, it'll make your, your life further down the road so much easier. Uh, <clears throat> I'd say that's, that's pretty much it. We, we just look mainly for, for students who have kind of the basics down, but then there's also something that you're passionate about, right? Like um, Aaron was really passionate about, uh, about all these, actually there's a lot of cool things that he's worked on, but he made his own bumper for his car. <laughs> that, do, do you have a picture of it by any chance, Aaron? Oh, he's oh yeah. So, you know, <clears throat> little. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I said, I don't have a picture of it, sadly. Yeah, it was quite oh. fun to do. Yeah. But, you know, just if, if there's something at all that you're, you like in general, then I would say that's, that's, that's a big thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also I'd like to chime in, as Dr. Wen mentioned, uh, now um, it is a, a very uh, multidisciplinary uh, world, especially in engineering. Um, disciplines. So um, there are blur blurred lines in between of the different majors. And uh, of course, the common ground, the common core, it is still the mathematics and physics for STEM. Um, so uh, on top of that, uh, also, it's a good idea if you could uh, be prepared with some programming classes, right? So learn some basic programming. Uh, to learn the digital uh, logic behind. Uh, that's important also because, uh, uh, yeah, also any, there's a, um, a, a post asking any specific language. Um, Dr. Wen is teaching our basic class now using Python because the threshold is relatively lower than the other high level programming languages. But the, uh, the program logic is uh, behind is identical. It, it's regardless if you're using C, Java, uh, or Python. Those are the, the most popular programming languages. Uh, regarding the CAD, computer-aided design tools, apparently uh, you will experience a lot um, with the, the CAD design. So uh, that's why we also had a, a link, the partnership with MathWorks. They had um, the uh, a lot of uh, very useful CAD tools that you will experience uh, uh, throughout the the curriculum in different disciplines. Um, right. So nowadays they're very user friendly. The CAD tools are very user friendly. So learning those, well, of course, it is on demand uh, when you are preparing yourself um, with the different subjects. You will you are using different tools, right? So, for example, MATLAB will be needed there, um, and Spice, um, which is a circuit design tool, CAD tool, and um, Solid Work, which is the design and modeling tool that you will experience. So, very soon, very soon after, especially when you transfer to the four-year uh, universities, you will experience the, the the use of those CAD tools. Yeah, yeah, of course, uh, self-studies, yeah. oh. self-learning is always um, helpful. Yeah. The, uh, the, the motivation, what you're interested in, I think th this is still the most important part. Yeah, so um, the last question too, does the internship have an orientation or some trainings to get more experience using different software? 
Um, I think Mesfin can speak a little bit to this, but basically, because uh, you know, they learned um, different web technologies and implemented them during this internship. Um, are you still here, Mesfin? Yeah. So, right. yeah. Okay. Uh, I I I don't have a previous uh, uh, experience about uh, uh, frameworks uh, to develop website. But now I do. Uh, I have also added. I used to know a little bit about HTML, for example, CSS, and uh, now I have like better understanding of like uh, HTML, CSS, and uh, uh, JavaScript. Again, uh, using different kind of website frameworks, I have uh, better understanding of uh, uh, environments like working for coding, uh, using uh, the repositories, like, I mean, it's in the future that we are, we finally, when we are in the real world, when we, are, when we are working, I mean, we are going to use those kind of things. So uh, now I have the experience to develop a website. Uh, so uh, I have also to, I have also able to use, uh, some kind of repositories to to publish your website. So this kind of uh, I, I got a lot of skills. So uh, now, uh, if you if you check uh, the Be Winners website that we are actually we developed it team, I played major part uh, on, on that on that website developing it. Uh, I mean, uh, besides that, you learn also as I said earlier soft skills. Uh, beside the technical skills. Uh, okay, that. Thank you. Great. I am um, Dr. Wang. You had mentioned it earlier, or actually, maybe it was Dr. Liu. Um, I think your team did a great job in terms of um, like ongoing like workshops and development for the students um, throughout the experience. Can you maybe speak to that a little bit, just in terms of? Um, what students went through and what what they can kind of expect. Yeah, so I think it's, um, you know, we kind of tried to make it a little bit as kind of similar as to industry as possible. Um, so there weren't a lot of like um, necessarily like uh, workshops per se. It was kind of like, you know, we have some project, we have some goals, um, kind of what skills do we need to learn or what software do we need to learn? Um, in order to accomplish those goals. And then we just kind of um, did the training. It was kind of ad hoc, basically. Um, but then, you know, what we tried to do, well, as much as we could do on Fridays uh, remotely, but hopefully in person next summer, as Fridays is usually reserved for kind of um, fun time. So, um, you know, it's still the summer, so we don't want everyone to be burnt out or anything so that's kind of what we tried to do right yeah so technical technically they're helping and they're working with the, the graduate students um, on a research for a robotic arm that is installed on a shower system so they can locate the patient who needs help with the, the shower uh, to dispense uh, soup, so, uh, soap and also water on the system. Uh, there, that involves some uh, computer vision, that involves some uh, the, the robotic arm design in mechanical engineering, that involves some programming part to control the robotic arm. So that is the technical part. As Dr. Wen mentioned, uh, it is summertime, so we also want to make it fun and uh, relaxing on the flip side also uh, we prepare them uh, the students with the experiences of pro uh, the project management so we use the game chart to identify all the timelines that uh, they're facing especially if it is a group project uh, students need to uh, accommodate each other and be sure that they're on the same page for the same stage of work there is some synchronization point they need to see if they um, they're ready for the next step. They report to the faculty advisors and uh, using the game chart, which is the way to show the timeline. Uh, on one dimension, this, uh, it lists the, all the tasks. On the other, it shows the duration when you want to plan to do that. 
and also there is an indicator what is the percentage of completion. So that is a very helpful way to to plan and also being organized. I think that's also a very important factor. And the other factor is that we uh, consider the different interests of the, uh, the interns. So some students focus more on the, the web development. Some others focus on the, more the, uh, the CAD tool development, uh, the, the use of the CAD tools. And also in general, there's also plenary sessions so they can learn how to develop their career plan right, in the future. They interviewed seven or eight um, or alumni who are my top students. So, so I actually uh, uh, invited them to communicate with uh, the, the uh, alumni. And actually, they produced some of the video clips, which are the outcome of the, uh, the products of the, uh, the, uh, the interviews with uh, alumni. So they asked them technical questions, how they plan, why they choose this discipline. And, and you can go through the website uh, that uh, Dr. Wen provided. Right, so there are uh, some examples to show um, what what are the struggling that they experienced, what are the uh, the technical issues, why they want to choose the STEM discipline, what is the next step. Some of them are continuing with the graduate study, some others just straightly go to industry. All right, how did they work together with other students? Those are critical issues to make you successful, especially in your undergraduate study and and also maybe the future and or the graduate study in the future and uh, i believe uh, uh, these important these are the important experiences we also want the interns to experience so i want to answer kind of these three questions i feel like they're pretty related um it's not really anything about good i mean this is an internship right so we know you don't you're going to be on the earlier side of kind of your your career right so you know, most students, I mean, myself too, when I did internships, you know, I didn't really have that many skills. So it's really just an attitude. Um, you know, if you're always learning, looking to learn new things, you're, you're really, you like taking initiative and working on projects. That's really all we look for. And I can clarify a little bit in terms of qualifications. Um, I saw a couple of um, those questions come up. Um, as well. So in order to apply and be considered for um, an internship placement through the STEM core program, um, one, you need to be in good standing with the STEM core program, meaning that um, your support specialist has to be able to recommend you as in you are participating um, in workshops throughout the year. You do need to be calculus ready. Um, is what we qualify as. Um, you don't have to have taken calculus yet, but you do need to have completed your STEM core year, which means that by the end of spring 2022, that you should be eligible to take calculus as your next class. Um, so those would be the two or uh, some of like the primary requirements. And then obviously you do need to submit an application and go through um, the STEM core internship application. So um, maybe Mesfin and Aaron, if you can speak a little bit to um, what your process looked like in terms of placement, I think that might be a little bit helpful, just like how you applied, interviewed, um, and started with your placement at, at CSULA. So, uh, go, go ahead, ahead Matt. Go ahead, Matt. Don't all jump at once. <laughs> Aaron. Aaron first. <laughs> okay. So the placement with the STEM Corps internship, I got in contact with my site support specialist, Myra. She's the one that recommended me for the internship. So from there, you would have to fill out the STEM Corps application where you do list your uh, job skills that you have acquired over the years, as well as your um, your course, the courses you've taken that put you in a better position, better standing. And then the way that the internship, I mean, the interview process works is you sit down for the first interview and they just ask you questions, what you want to work on, um, kind of your career interests, like Dr. Liu 
said we're, they're really there to develop your career interests and they tailor the internship for you. Um, and so they kind of take that information and build their intern group from that and give a pretty a, a vast variety of uh, different um, different interests. So everyone, so there's a little bit of everything within the group. Yeah, in addition to that, so doing interview by itself also give you some kind of insight. I mean, yes, it will help you like you, you are developing your interview skills. So it will give you direction where the questions are uh, focused. So, it, so for your, you'll keep it in mind that for the future and it will, you will make yourself more, uh, more ready for the next interviews. So doing interview by itself is also, it's very important. I wanted to add that to Aaron's point. That's, thank you. Yeah, um, to be the interviewer. Um, so I would like to come comment uh, what um, uh, our students performance, interns performance. Uh, they, they did a very impressive job. Um, so uh, we decided well, we interviewed five and we chose five. <laughs> yeah. That's how good they are. And so for the next tier, the next cohort, uh, prepare yourself and come to us and don't be afraid. Um, we're, we're friends of you, right? So hopefully, uh, Masvin and Aaron, you don't feel pressured, right? <laughs> okay. All right, don't feel stressful uh, when we, <laughs> we're trying to lead you uh, and make sure that mutually we have an understanding if this is going to be helpful for you, and you can, uh, you know, enjoy the summer with uh, some research uh, facilities available for you. So that's what an inter inter uh, interview about. <laughs> um, thank you all for clarifying. Um, and just so our um, future potential applicants are aware, that it's typically a two-tier interview, um, where first, once you submit your STEM core application, you actually go through a first round interview with growth sector. Um, so that's normally a conversation with myself or Myra or Gabe um, to get a feel for where um, you'd be interested in interning and just overall fit. Um, and then second round interview would actually be with the internship site slash hosts, which in this case um, would be Dr. Wang and Dr. Liu for Cal State LA. Um, so I've dropped the internship application a few times um, in the chat. Um, so definitely make sure that you check that out. Um, one other huge tip that I would give is, and Aaron had mentioned it, is make sure that you're connecting with your campus student support specialist. Um, that is your direct contact to all things STEM core. Of course, um, we are all here as um, additional resources for you, but your support specialist will have the best idea in terms of um, opportunities that are coming up and what you need to be do, what you need to do to be considered. Um, in addition, um, your student support specialist will be like your first stop in terms of reviewing and helping you put together your STEM resume as well, because that is a requirement for the application as well is that you do need to have an updated STEM resume that you can up upload to the application in order to be considered. So make sure if they are have, are have not already reached out to you, which I'm pretty sure they have done or are doing, um, that you are connecting with them to make sure that that's on your radar because the application is currently open. And I just wanted to help answer this question of how many slots, well, I guess, you know, there's, there's a lot of different uh, organizations, but we'll probably have about four to five slots again. That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> We're shooting for 15 to 20. But, We're working um, on it. <laughs> oh, we are shooting. We are actually shooting for 15 to 20. Yep. Oh, yep. I'm sorry. Yep. So um, for TBD students, um, we're still working on what that number will actually look like. But um, we are planning to increase it from five. And this would be across the network. So it doesn't mean that there's going to be 15 or 20 students directly from one STEM core campus. That's it's right. going to be across yeah. um, the network um, for those students that are placed. But yeah, I think just hearing from Aaron and Mesfin, it was such a positive experience that we want, we definitely want to be able to expand that um, for more students across the network. Right. 
sorry, uh, Dr. Wen's information was right, valid till yesterday because we're still communicating with growth of the sector. So I haven't had a chance to update Dr. Wen. So sorry, that's that's a last no minute worries, surprise. No worries. I just wanted to say that there were at least that amount. Sorry. So. Yeah. And meanwhile, I provided a uh, Google form link for you if you can spend time to provide us your information so we can follow up with you. And the same information uh, has already been sent to Cheryl and Cheryl will be also uh, able to share that information with you later. So no rush. Awesome. Thank you so much. So we are coming up on the hour. Um, if, there, if any students have any last burning questions, feel free to unmute yourself or pop it directly into the chat. Um, otherwise, I would just again remind you all, application is open, so, so get your information in. Uh, this is a great opportunity. Huge thank you to um, Mesfin and Aaron for being able to share um, their experiences and um, for Dr. Wang and Dr. Liu for coming on to speak to um, our group about the opportunities. Um, we're definitely excited. I see a question, when is the deadline for application? Um, the application opened this week. Early, early application deadline will end on October 10th. However, we will be accepting rolling applications into February. Um, reason being that we do work obviously with um, Cal State LA, but we do work with a few other employers who want resumes much earlier. So we are opening the process up a little bit earlier, but if you need a little bit more time or for our students who are in their first year of the program and they're just now taking like an intro to engineering or intro to CAD class, that's fine. And you can work with your support specialist to get your application in um, towards the end of the semester, if not early spring to be considered. All right, I see Dr. Wang had to um, jump off. Okay, um, but thank you everybody for being here. Feel free to re um, follow up with myself or support specialist for um, follow-up questions um, but enjoy the rest of your Friday thanks a bunch I'll, I'll stay on just in case anybody has any follow-up questions for me. thank you Law. thank you everybody thank you